What's that? He's like, I gotta see what it is. Okay, so this is alien versus predator versus tiger shark. It's big, it's big. I love this little gun that he has. It tells you what it is. I want one of those. I gotta use my brain. No one wants to do that. Uh, those look like mushrooms. Mushrooms on our planet are scary. Mushrooms on another planet, 10 times as scary. Hi, I'm Kinga Phillips. I have a background in journalism and anthropology and in surviving in the wilderness, if you will. I also love diving in the ocean, so I'm super excited to take a look at Subnautica. Let's dive in. Is that cheesy? Yeah. We're in some kind of a pod. We're gonna crash land. Just guessing. Usually how it starts, isn't it? Actually, it maybe looks like some kind of a underwater habitat, but it's on fire. Fire in enclosed spaces, bad news, really bad news. Oh, this is seriously on fire. Whatever this place is, you wanna get out of there immediately. If it's enclosed and there's a fire, it's sucking the oxygen out of there, smoke. Abort mission, get out. That's a fire extinguisher, you might wanna use that. All right, so he's putting out the fire, you're still gonna wanna get out of there. This thing's very fancy, modern looking. Ooh, gosh, his futuristic iPad. It's in emergency mode, so fancy. See, even in the future, they've got the wheel of death. Oh, it's loading, I'll be here for 10 minutes. So it looks like he's taking stock of where he is. This is great in a survival situation. The first thing you wanna do is you really wanna stop. You wanna take note of what you have, all the supplies that you have. First aid kit, that's great. You wanna have some basic knowledge of first aid if you are out in the wilderness in a survival situation that is gonna serve you well. I'm guessing if there was a crash and a fire, he might have some cuts, some lacerations. In a pinch, and I mean this literally, you might have to shove your finger into your wound and actually pinch an artery. Okay, so this is a water planet. From what I understand, this is fully a water planet. There's nothing else on there. So Kevin Costner should be right around the corner. Oh, look at that, fishes. I like fishes. It's neat, that actually looked like a Navinax, a sea slug. Got some kind of a limestone structure. It's karst topography. Forms cenotes in underwater caves, if you're into that sort of thing. All right, he's looking around, he's swimming, maybe he's looking for stuff. You've got these underwater caves, coral reefs. Bro is free diving, slow clap, I love this. I see kelp. Kelp is actually a really good source of food. If you have an option, you wanna rinse it off because you don't wanna be ingesting a lot of salt. Looks like his spaceship is on fire, so we don't know if that is actually habitable or if he's gonna have to find himself some sort of an island, which would be a very good idea because floating around in the water, just you, you're gonna last about three days because getting fresh water is gonna be nearly impossible, which actually is a, is a good time to bring up drinking your own pee. Don't do it, the movies lie. It's actually bad. What is that, a staple gun? A scanner. It's an acid mushroom. I'm not familiar with those. Are those the kind that make you see pretty things? I don't know. Seaweeds are good glowing seaweeds. Now I'm not familiar with those unless it's bioluminescence. Bioluminescence is a kind of a form of algae. On our planet, kelp and seaweed are actually a great source of food. So you want to collect that, have it for snacks. Our friend here is trying to repair his space capsule flotation device pod. It's probably a good idea. People have survived at sea in a boat or some kind of a ship floating aimlessly for over a year. And if it's just you in the water, you're not gonna survive for very long. If you have a wetsuit, great. It's probably gonna keep you warm, keep you buoyant, but eventually you are just gonna dehydrate and die. Plus, you know what? Your skin's gonna fall off. You know, your skin gets really pruney and, and soft when you're in the water. It's gonna be kind of gross. Ooh, now it's nighttime. Look at all these things bioluminescing. That's a real thing. That actually happens underwater. Actually in deep sea animals, you find that. I mean, you're gonna have some food sources here. You're gonna be able to find some fish, whether you're spearfishing or if you have hook and bait. Um, the kelp we already decided is good food source. Not so much the coral, can't really eat that. Be careful not to scrape yourself on it because they're a living organism, so they get in there and cause infection. All right, filtered water. Oh, you've got water. This is good. If you don't have fresh water and you were relying on methods of desal or rain, you also want to minimize your food consumption because digestion actually uses a lot of water. It's a beautiful underwater environment. Some kind of a snail. I love this little gun that he has. It tells you what it is. I want one of those. 
I gotta use my brain, no one wants to do that. All these things are so colorful and pretty, all kinds of different fishes. I wonder if there are any dangerous creatures out there. Right, so this guy is actually pretty geared up. I can see fins there. I see a wetsuit, that's gonna be good. It's gonna keep your body temperature. The thing is hypothermia, I don't know what temperature this water is, it looks pretty tropical, but even in 80 degree water, you're not gonna last very long because your core is gonna drop, you're gonna get cold. Welcome aboard, Captain. Caution, continued degradation of the- This is a full underwater base. Cave sulfur, creature egg, ooh, what's that? Wreck, sandstone chunk. This guy can identify everything. He's got a 3D printer. Why don't you build yourself an engine to get the hell off this planet? What is that, like an underwater scooter? That's fun. Guy's like, you know what, I'm here. I'm gonna have a good time. The seamount is a fast, safe mode of transportation. But remember that swimming is good. Yeah, you gotta get your exercise in, clearly. Welcome aboard, Captain. Okay, so now he's exploring at night. This guy's a true scientist, I feel like. He's like, I'm on this planet, I might die, but I gotta know what everything is. Gotta identify it, give it some scientific names. Ooh, it's like a seahorse with a big round head. Kind of a mermaid. It's a mermaid seahorse. Is it edible? That's my question for everything. I'm always hungry. He's got a life pod, he's got a seamount, beacons. He's got it all and then some. Ooh, it, it's like a, I don't even know what that guy is. It's like a jellyfish. You might wanna stay away from that. If I know anything about jellyfish, you probably wanna avoid those. Although it's pretty. In fact, it's mesmerizing. But it might kill you. Man of war. Your kanji box jellies, they will F you up so fast. Ten, nine, I mean, the most important thing here is that he's got shelter and it looks like he's got water. That ship is done for. Probably don't need to go back there. I mean, maybe a little bit of salvaging, but you know, wait till the fire's died down. That'd be my advice. Oh, no, never mind. There it goes. Ugh, this is awkward. My phone. Ooh, radiation suit. You know, when you're in a survival situation, I'm always saying shelter, fire, water, radiation suit. I had a dollar for every time I try to teach people that. Okay, so he's coming to the surface and there's an island. Well now, look at this. Okay, so now we're on an island. This is great. Um, plant life on an island. Don't know that you wanna eat things that you don't know anything about. Uh, those look like mushrooms. Mushrooms on our planet are scary. Mushrooms on another planet, 10 times as scary. This is maybe like a crab creature. If it's a crab, you can eat it. It'll probably be quite delicious. Got all kinds of plants, grasses, maybe something like a palm tree. Maybe there's a coconut there. Coconuts are harder to climb than one person would think. I've tried, I made it a few feet off the ground. Kind of reminds me of that movie with Sam Jackson where the shark comes up and, and eats him, which we haven't really seen any predators. Well, that's a plus if there are no vicious predators on this planet. All right, so it says that the sunbeam will arrive in 39 minutes and 38 seconds. So I'm guessing that's rescue. If you've only got 39 minutes, have some fun. Ooh, that looks big. Suddenly got really murky. I'm not a fan of murky water. Things sneak up on you in murky water. What's that? He's like, I gotta see what it is. Okay, so this is alien versus predator versus tiger shark. It's big, it's big. Is it aggressive? Is it friendly? He's zapping it, he's scanning it. It's the little wheel of death. In 45 seconds, I'll tell you if this thing's gonna eat you or not. Oh, that thing's large and it roars. But you know, like any other predator, I guess if it were a shark, it's the only thing I can relate it to. Stand your ground, don't panic, don't flail around, don't raise your heartbeat. I've had to move tiger sharks out of the way with my hands like this. You don't want to let them push you around. If anything, swim at them instead of away from them. We broke an atmosphere and we're descending towards the landing site. They're coming, this is great. Stay alive, don't let the creature eat you. It's always nice to know when someone's coming to get you in a survival situation. Change course. Set thrusters to full. Oh, the rescue got zapped. Oh, oh, boy, that is disappointment times 10. Here you were all happy. You had 39 minutes to rescue. And now it turns out that they're all dead and you're alone. That's a bad day in the survival space. It's just you and that alien predator creature. Analysis of the patterns on the walls cannot ascertain whether their purpose is aesthetic or functional. All right, so this isn't his base. He has now stumbled into a base that is on the planet. So there was habitation here. Is it still here? Is it good? Is it bad? Are they gonna help you? Are they gonna kill you? Ooh, so many questions. And down he goes, exploring this 
Amazing Temple of Doom-esque underwater structure. Got his gloves on. It's a good thing, staying warm. Oh man, it just punctured you and pierced you. A little bit of venom insertion maybe. It's not a good thing. So Subnautica was fun because I love the underwater scape, but uh, from a survival standpoint, I, it was kind of neither here nor there. There were bases, there were alien bases. Yeah, you know, really, well, what do you do there? Except for maybe use your little zapper to identify things. If you want to see more videos, check out Gameology on Facebook and YouTube. You know, people can hold their breath for multiple minutes. Got the sea gypsies that have larger spleen so that their bodies can process oxygen and they can hold their breath even longer and hold their breath for like 15 minutes. It's pretty incredible actually what the human body can do.